If you want to know how to use scenes in Ecamm Live and even which scenes to set up, then this video is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name is Alec and today we're talking all about scenes in Ecamm Live. And uh, what I've done is I did actually create a four and a half hour mammoth tutorial all about how to go from zero to a full production setup in Ecamm Live and even uh, with Stream Deck as well and building out all of our icons, overlays and things like that. And I'll link to that video up above and also down in the description because as I say, it is a long one and you may not want to sit through all of that and some of it you may already know or all of it you may already know. But I'm breaking these videos down into smaller, more manageable bite-sized <laughs> videos uh, that uh, they are for people basically maybe like you who just wants to watch one particular video at a time or only interested in one part with all that waffling said i'm going to cut now to the video which is where i talk all about different scenes and uh, yeah i'll join you on the other side and let's talk about uh, scenes so as i say i've got all of these scenes we're not going to build out all of those but what i'm going to show you is the sort of building blocks to give you a few different ideas and then you can uh, you can try this out for yourself and you'll soon figure out how you can make multiple different scenes that might be uh, similar to each other so i thought we would talk next about actually planning these scenes so if i come out of demo mode uh, we can uh, talk about that and so planning our scenes the, num the scenes that I thought we would look at first of all is like a sort of a full frame shot if you like a main window which is something like this a head-on uh, shot uh, that you might want to use we'll look at how we can put a nice little border around it as well I don't tend to have a border on mine but I know a lot of people like that so in terms of actually building an overlay I thought it would be a good little exercise to go through and then you can choose whether you want to use it or not the next one I thought we'd do is a screen sharing uh, overlay and so I've got a screen sharing overlay like this which is my picture and the uh, uh, my web <laughs> that is happens to be my website but I'm just sharing my uh, my other computer screen actually then I thought we'd have a uh, like a phone cam or a top-down cam so uh, those could actually be the same thing I'm using uh, a little old uh, Logitech C920 here I can just even pull it into view there you go it's my little Logitech camera and I've just sort of repurposed that as a top-down camera incidentally the camera that I'm using uh, for anybody who is interested is a 10 year old Canon EOS 60D uh, so not cutting edge by any stretch uh, it's not a not a bad camera but it's just not the latest and greatest uh, but I did do a, a video about how I actually used that and hooked that up for originally I did it as to improve my quality of my zoom calls but I've did a, done a video all about that one as well and how to link up like an old DSLR camera uh, to your computer as well so you can judge for yourself what the picture quality looks like it's as I say 10 year old camera with the kit lens uh, so uh, so yeah I think it's uh, it's probably passable <laughs> uh, in terms of quality so uh, so yeah I thought we'd do that uh, camera shot the uh, the top down camera and then I'm also going to show you how you can use your phone as a another camera as well you might want to use that as a uh, top down camera if you don't have a second camera or you might want to use it if you want to do something like uh, well for example I'll just quickly show you so if I want to go to uh, share my uh, phone camera for example to give you a little tour of what my studio looks like which you might want to do this is a quite a common sort of use case uh, if I click over to that now there we go so there you can see there's my uh, my monitor I've got my uh, old 2013 MacBook sitting over at the side and then there you go there is my uh, my Canon camera that is how you can use your your camera as your phone rather as a, as a second camera it's a great way to repurpose an old uh, an old phone so this is an old 5s uh, and uh, yeah it's get, getting put to use as a second camera and also as a, a, a second or third stream deck <laughs> but I'll show you about that later as well so back to those scenes uh, we've got the full frame the screen share top down and the phone camera and then the final one is uh, if you're going to be doing live streaming then you may want one of those sort of the live stream countdown timer so I'm going to show you how you can build that scene and build it out with the countdown with some music and things like that and some uh, graphics on there as well so just in case you're not sure what I'm talking about uh, this would be something like uh, this one so uh, yeah when you when you're waiting for your stream to start something like this with some music in the background your uh, timer and so on and so yeah we'll build this one out as well so let's uh, start from I muted my own mic there by accident. <laughs> let's start from the beginning and we'll uh, I'll share my screen with you again and then we'll let's build this all out. So 
in, uh, let me just hide some of these so that you don't have to uh, see them all. Now, uh, yeah, so we'll start with a blank scene. So we just got to here, scene, uh, new empty scene. And as a default, it will just use whatever your default camera is. Uh, and then in here, you can see that my camera is my EOS 60D, but I could equally se select uh, my other Logitech camera that I've got plugged in. Uh, and incidentally, if you have got a camera that you're using and you want that to be your default camera, if you've got multiple cameras, then you would just come down here and click select default camera. And that just makes that your default. So whenever you start a new scene, it brings that, uh, that camera in. Now there are some options with the scenes. Let me just call this one. Got my keyboard, oops, a daisy, a little bit too far out of the way for me to reach here. Move a little bit closer, that'll help. Uh, so let's call this scene, uh, just call it main. This is our main scene. And there are a couple of other options with the scene. So you can click in source and you could change it between either a blank scene, the camera, the uh, screen share, uh, now that's sharing all of my screens by default, but we'll come back to this when we talk about the screen share afterwards, actually. Uh, so, or you can have it as a video file if you just want a video to play as part of the whole uh, whole scene. So we'll start with a blank uh, blank scene, or rather a, uh, a <laughs> I say a blank screen. It's not a blank screen. It's a blank scene with just my, uh, my camera. So what I want to do now is I want to uh, just get rid of this uh, quite glaring uh, background. So as I say, I'll just come up here and I'll toggle on green screen. Uh, and then I want to just come into here. It defaults to this sort of brick background that you may have seen in some other demos and things like that. But you can basically choose any file. There are some of that come stock with it. So if you want a uh, beach background, personally, I would avoid anything like this except for the odd joke. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily look uh, the best, certainly not for meetings or things like that. Uh, so then there's different ones like this. In the video about uh, green screen, which I've mentioned, that I'll mention again and uh, put the link to in the description, uh, you've got to be careful if you are using green screen. Things like this, it looks obviously wrong, doesn't it? And it's all to do with the camera position for my camera is different to the camera position that was used to take the picture behind me. Also, the lighting is very different in terms of tone and things like that. So I, I explain that all, all of that in the other video. But uh, yeah, just something to be careful of when you are doing any um, any green screen stuff. Uh, so I have actually got this background, which is the one I'm using. So I'll just stick to that, uh, which sort of slightly matches more my uh, the sort of tones that I've set up in terms of the camera settings and things like that. But uh, the sort of finer detail of that I'll leave for another video. We're just going to go through now the actual process of setting these scenes up. So that's our main scene. Uh, let's say we also want to have, uh, in fact, let me go back to that list, which ones we were going to set up. So the next one would be a screen sharing scene. So if I come back here now to our new scene, uh, main it was, wasn't it? That was a new one from older. So yeah, the, the scenes, you can just drag them around if you want to reorder them in the scenes panel. And you can also, which is uh, I think quite useful, uh, group them into folders. So if we wanted to have a collection of scenes, in fact, if I just create the next one first, I'll go scene, uh, new empty scene, and then I'll call this one uh, uh, screen share. screen share. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call these demo because when we come to uh, the stream deck part of it, I need to be able to identify these to show you how we can uh, pick them. So I'll put them as demo just so that we can be clear about which ones they are. So yes, I can move these around and uh, put this one up at the top as well. And if you did want to group these together, you can come down to the bottom here and you can see this little, you can either add new scenes from here as well or duplicate scenes, or you can add a new group of scenes. So I could add in here, uh, my scenes. You can call them what you want, but then I can just simply just drag those in. So you can see how I had um, how I'd done that with uh, uh, my uh, collections of scenes that I had before. So I've got them grouped by different use cases and then even within those, you can have folders within folders. If you do have a lot of scenes, it just helps to uh, helps to organize them. But I'll keep them simple for now and keep them out of there. So we've got our demo um, screen sharing and then we've got our uh, screen, I beg your pardon, I've called that the wrong one. <laughs> that was the demo main, wasn't it? That really confused me for a minute there. So that's our demo main, that's our demo screen sharing. And I'll just delete this one because that was one I made earlier for some reason. So the screen sharing, we're just going to go to the source and we're going to change from camera to screen share. So now we've got our screen share. 
when you are screen sharing, you can choose between uh, different things. You can either show the uh, specific display. So I've got two displays. And as you can see in here, there's one of them over here and there's one of them over the other side. Uh, so you can show uh, primary display. So that will show whichever is set up as your main display, or you can change it to your secondary display. Now, what you can also do is, in fact, if I just move that display over for one second, I'll come to a new thing. In fact, there you can see I've got my little Stream Deck panel open for our little demonstration later. Uh, what you can do in the screen sharing, though, is you can actually select to share, close my preview down, you can actually select to share a specific application. So rather than the secondary display, you could say the current application, and that will just share what is open and what that does is actually as you move that around it adjusts the uh, the image to make sure that it keeps it always centered and framed in the shot uh, but for now I'm going to actually set that as the full screen so we'll select the secondary display again so now as you can see that's showing my full screen over there if I just change over to a different window you can see that's now got all of my uh, my screen in it you can see also that it's put a picture in picture of my uh, my camera in here. Uh, I've got my mouse on the wrong screen there. You can see we've got this uh, this picture in picture. Let me just move that preview out of the way. It's got this uh, picture in picture. You can move this around anywhere. And uh, what we want to do is we want to have this screen share as I showed you. Uh, well, something similar to this, uh, something similar to that is what we're trying to achieve. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to have, rather than that screen be full screen, we need it to be a part of a screen. Now, this is the one thing which I either can't see or there isn't a feature, but I can't see how to just add a screen sharing in in a separate window. What you can do is you can swap between these two. So I can make this is now my little window and this is my sort of background. Oh, look at that. You can see the top of my screen share. That's really uh, my green screen. It's really broken the illusion now, hasn't it? Uh, in fact, let me fix that. You don't want to be looking at that. I'll put this back to uh, this one. So, yeah, you can see that now I've got my screen sharing is my picture in picture. Whereas my uh, 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 main camera is the uh, the feed that you've got there. So what we're going to want is that we want this something like that. But what I can't actually make it do as yet uh, either through my own ineptitude or through a lack of a feature, and I'm thinking it's the latter, to be honest, is I want to have that there, and I just want to have the camera as a separate pop-out window that I can put sort of next to it so that we can replicate something like I showed you in my uh, my example there. So the only way that I've been able to find to do this is actually just add the camera in again as a second feed. So if I do that as an overlay, I'm going to come down to the uh, bottom, my Stream Deck just swaps straight out of my uh, Ecamm Live uh, controls there. But down at the bottom here, you can see these overlays. I can add in a camera overlay. So I'm going to click on that one. And that's now popped in a camera overlay over the top of that one. And in fact, let's try something a little bit different with this. Let's try and make it so that we've got this one, because uh, this is a good opportunity to show you the uh, the controls that you have over the camera. So obviously I can select the camera, but you can also change the aspect ratio. So that's the dimensions, how wide compared to how tall it is. So if I go from here and I can change to, uh, instead of widescreen, you could change it to a more sort of four by three, old school TV <laughs> aspect ratio, um, or you can go to uh, square, make it a square, um, or we could have it as tall. So uh, that one. So you, there you can see it's more like that, which that would be a good shot for a mobile shot. In fact, we'll have a look at that afterwards. Uh, uh, or you can make it a round uh, camera, something like that. If you wanted it in the corner, you were doing screen uh, demos, then that's off, uh, quite a popular one. Or you can actually just make it completely custom. So if you click custom, then basically what you can do is you can just drag it into absolutely any shape you uh, you want. So uh, I tell you what, for this one, let's make this as a uh, tall one and we'll have a, sh a view that is, uh, if we ignore the uh, the camera in the background, all we'll see is the the uh, desktop image from the screen sharing. And then we'll see this one here, maybe make that a little bit smaller, but we'll play around with that when we make the overlay. So it's just to give us an idea in terms of what we actually need to make for our overlays. So I hope that makes sense. Hopefully if it doesn't yet, it will do a little bit later. So we've got our main view and we've got our sort of desktop demo view. 
and then let's have a look at what the next one we said we were going to make was ah, yeah, a top down shot well actually a top down shot we could have something very similar to that uh, that last one that we just did but let's say we're going to change some uh, of the shape of it a little bit so um, let's come for that one in fact let's look at a new way to uh, to make out these uh, scenes so we'll start from here and then let's just go to uh, start with this blank one again and we'll come down to this plus sign because we're just going to add a blank screen and again it defaults to this green screen incidentally the uh, settings that you create for the camera are specific to that scene so when it brings in a new scene it will have like no uh, no green screen on it but if you remember from this one when I added this camera in as, a, as an extra camera it's remembered the settings of the camera from this scene which is the way you'd want it really because you might want to have different scenes with different backgrounds uh, but then uh, if you're adding the camera into the same the same scene then the green screen background you'd probably want to be uh, the same on a scene by scene basis if that makes sense so anyway let's go to a new scene and this is going to be our top down scene so let's say for this we're going to start with a blank canvas now we want to add in our uh, top down camera so let's come down to the bottom for our cameras and we'll click on that and then we're going to select in here that we want this this is my uh, logitech now incidentally when i went and did my ndi uh, source for sorry uh, <laughs> skipping ahead to the method there but when i did my source for my uh, top down camera uh, my mobile camera that i showed you earlier that popped up here and look that's my wife's old mobile that i've uh, pinched there to for the case of this so if i click my hd webcam uh, my logitech webcam rather this is our top down shot and again you can see it's keeping that scale and uh, if i drag the corner but we might want this to be uh, a square in fact let's uh let's see if we can make this something a little bit different so uh, we'll make this one perhaps like a, a top down cam like that and then we're going to want ourselves in and it's interesting you can see or useful rather you can see how it's put that sort of blue bounding box as a as a sort of guide so that you can see how close it is to the uh, to the edges and you can sort of line things up with that i'm actually going to put another square camera in here so i'll come back down to the camera at the bottom click on that one and then let's come up here and we'll change this to a square as well so uh, just sort of having some ideas here about how we can make this uh, work so you might want to do something where you're doing a um, side by uh, side where you're doing a demo of your uh, your desktop or something like that so there we go we'll put that one uh, put this one here like this and uh, let's get rid of that background again <laughs> i'm just going to stick with my default background just so that it's uh, consistent uh, another th thing I should point out actually about the uh, the green screen just quickly because it is quite a useful feature is if you have a green screen which is sort of narrow and just covers behind you but your camera is a lot wider uh, I think I can demonstrate this if I change my aspect ratio I'm going off topic a little bit here but I think it's useful to see this um, because actually my green screen does not go uh, all the way to the top of my my frame so I definitely had it earlier, didn't I, when I was, in fact, let me change this to square. Uh, hopefully this should be quite clear what I'm trying to do when I've uh, finished. Unmask edges. Ah, it's, it's there anyway. Uh, so can you see there's this little white patch at the top? Well, that's basically the top of my green screen. That's where my green screen ends and uh, there's actually the wall behind it. So it's not normally an issue because that happens to be cropped out of frame. But if it isn't cropped out of frame for you, you might even have one of these sort of small narrow green screens that literally just covers behind you and you've got big expanses of space on either side that are in shot that you want to apply your background to. Well, very cleverly in uh, uh, Ecamm Live, if you click on green screen, you can see how it's gone to the edge of the green screen but we've got that gap well you can simply click on this little one here mask edges and uh, it fills that all in for you so you don't need to have a green screen that fills your scene in order to have your background fill the entire uh, background i hope that makes sense <laughs> sorry for that digression but i thought it might be uh, a little bit useful for some of you so this is back to the square and we want to resize that so that we're sort of the same size as the others I could uh, I could actually just put one over the other uh, now here's here's a thing that's worth mentioning what I was going to do is put this one over the top of that and just scale it till it's exactly the same size but you can see how it's actually behind each other and that's because anything that you add into the scene is sort of stacked and layered 
And when you come into your overlays on this side, you can see that they're listed in a particular order. Well, that is the order of the layers. So the anything that is at the top is at the topmost of the stack of overlays and anything that's further down than that is at the bottom. So if I wanted this image here or this overlay, this uh, camera to be above the other one, I would simply grab it from here and drag it up to the top. So now you can see it's popped to above the other one. So now it's below it and now it is above it. So all I was going to do here is just to get these that are, so that they're the same size. I thought, well, I'll just pop them into here and then I can drag them out. Uh, whoops, drag them so that they are exactly the same size. And now when they're side by side, it should look uh, a lot, a lot better, a lot neater because they will be uh, the same size. <laughs> right. So uh, there we go. So that is now I'm going to just double click in that one and call that one uh, demo. And what's that one? That's top down, isn't it? top down okay now that uh, camera one by the way uh, so we've got uh, if I come back to these so we've got our full frame we've got our screen sharing and we've got our top down uh, now we want to do our phone camera so maybe a good way to do that would be something uh, similar to this other one so we want something similar to that but instead of being uh, done in this way we want to have the camera there and maybe our main shot here so uh, I'll, I'll use this as an example. I've shown you how you can use your camera sort of landscape, your, sorry, your phone camera landscape as a, uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a camera. But for this example, let's just say that we want to actually use it to demo anything that happens to be on our screen on the phone. So what we'll do here is we'll do a, a new blank scene again. So click the plus and then we'll call this one demo phone. Again, I'm just calling them all demo because we'll be later, we'll be linking our stream deck to this so that we can just click between them uh, as I'm doing. In fact, maybe now it might be a good time to show you exactly what I'm doing just so that it makes sense while I'm talking. I'll go over Stream Deck a lot more a bit later, but uh, this will perhaps just help. So here is what I control my uh, Ecamm Live with. Actually, I use this one and I've also got this one here <laughs> and I've got Stream Deck on a mobile as well. Uh, I'm actually using this one to flip between the uh, slides. So where I bring up my slides, like if I press this button here, it's just brought me back to this scene. And if I press uh, top down, it's brought me to here uh, and I can activate all my overlays and things like that. So uh, things like, uh, yeah, once again, I could activate my, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe is that button. So when I click that, it comes up. So if you are finding this useful, now might be the time to go and hit the like button or subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you get notified when there are any other videos coming out. Uh, and I've also got my animated overlays. So uh, my buy me a coffee link. So that's probably the easiest way to support the channel is to go to buymeacoffee.com slash take one tech. And that's a way that uh, viewers can uh, support the channel if they're finding the content useful. But that's all done from the stream deck. And I'm going to show you how you can basically do all of this and create these icons and everything for your scenes as well. So uh, so yeah, if I come back to the uh, phone shot, so as you can see that before I had uh, the phone uh, as a camera. So if I flick over to my camera, I'm now activating the camera on my, uh, my little phone. And then when I press the uh, camera button on here, I've got this one that's my mobile. You can see that it is now my uh, camera view. But what you might want to do is you might want to have this as a vertical. Say you were going to do a, so now I've turned my camera around, but that doesn't quite fit on the screen, does it? So what I thought we could do here is we could make a, uh, I've just muted myself, by the way. I, uh, I thought what we could do is we could make a view that was more kind of like a vertical aspect view. Uh, so for the camera view, we'll make one that's our picture and then like if you were going to show for example like an app or something like that then it would be useful for that so let's get that done shall we if we go over to our demo scene here for the uh, phone and uh, sorry take my buy me a coffee link off there um, if we go to the uh, demo for the phone and what we want to do for this is uh, let's just build it out from scratch again so let's do the source as blank and here we want to have uh, maybe we can actually duplicate this one and what we want to do here is change uh, the uh, this one we want to be our phone source so let's change that to be our phone so now you can see i've got my full camera uh, my full phone picture and then let's change this one let's make the source blank and then we'll just add in just purely the uh, the camera 
There we go. I'll drag this one out here, something like that. We can play around with the exact sizing and positions of these afterwards. Uh, and now you can see that the phone's gone behind it. So uh, we'll drag that one down there. So now the phone is above it. So uh, yeah, it's a bit hard to see this perhaps be, with it being uh, black on the black background. But once we've got our overlay in place, it'll all make a lot more sense. So finally, which other scene did we have to do? We said we were going to make a countdown timer, which is something like uh, like this, as I showed you earlier. So what we need for that is, well, all we've got at the moment is the uh, the picture. So let's come and just create another blank scene. I'll come back to this one first and we'll do uh, Daisy. That seems like it's not quite remembered where we are with it, isn't it? There we go. Uh, something's happened to that demo phone one, hasn't it? Well, never mind. Let me uh, just move on and we'll come back to that one if it's still not working later. So we'll come and add a new scene and this, all we're going to do for this one is uh here we go so we'll call this demo uh, countdown right and for this one all we want is again we'll start with a blank scene and we'll add a picture whoops i added the wrong thing there i wanted a uh i wanted a camera not a picture and let's uh just make this square for now we can change it around afterwards uh square and we're going to actually put an overlay which will cover this entirely anyway. So you'll see how we'll do that after. So let's just add the green screen again to get rid of that uh, background. And so, yeah, what we're going to have here is some sort of big uh, overlay. We're going to have a little picture in. And the reason, by the way, why people have a picture in and the timer is because it just adds a bit of visual uh, clues to the, uh, to the video that there's something actually happening rather than you could just have a placeholder. Uh, but this is the one that I would normally have, and this is what we're going to uh, going to build out. So we've got the uh, the main scene, we've got the screen sharing, the top down, the phone, and the uh, on the side here, and the uh, the countdown timer. So let's go into the main scene, and let's get our overlay in. So now we're going to come into our overlays panel here. You can see this one. The different types of overlays you've got. We used a camera overlay before, obviously, to build out the scenes, but you also can add in a widget. So the widget is actually something like the uh, buy me a coffee link that I added. So that uh, that link there that pops into the bottom, buymeacoffee.com slash take one tech. That's actually a, a, a an HTML code snippet, I think. That might be not the, the wrong terminology. It's not actually HTML, but it's a, a code snippet, basically, that you add in. And uh, yeah, it's a, a sort of... Um, a web widget for want of a better word uh, so that you can add widgets in but you can also add in uh, text a timer which we'll come to uh, uh, a movie or an animation which we'll use as well but for now we're just going to click on this one uh, new image overlay so I'll click on that and it should bring up a window to pick out our image overlay so I've got these in my example files image overlays and that was the first one is the frame so I'll click on that and look at that isn't that looking better already? <laughs> uh, in fact, that does actually look quite good. It looks uh, uh, rather in keeping with my background colors. So there we go. We've got our first overlay. We've got an image uh, picture overlay, a picture frame. And you'll notice as well, because we sized it correctly in um, in Keynote by, you know, remember if I was, if you remember when I uh, started the file, I had that uh, the aspect ratio set correctly from the start. So it's just automatically brought it in at the right size. And that'll be the same if you download these images, then you can play around with the uh, template for anything you export, or if you just use these stock images that I've given you, or my these basic images, then they'll all come in just at the right size over the frame. So let's have a look at another one. Now it's starting to get exciting, isn't it? You can see it's actually looking like a bit more like a production that we're building out. So you can go over to the uh, screen share one. Let me click on the uh, overlay button again down at the bottom. And now we want to go to uh, the second one, which was this one. Click on that. And there we go. That's looking good as well. But we need to resize things a little bit in this one. So let me just come and grab my... Uh, whoops. Right. So this is a good point to talk about locking. <laughs> there are different things that you can lock. You can either lock a scene. So if I come over to this, this scene on this side, we're in the share screen. If I click on that little lock next to it, it doesn't appear until you hover over it. But click on that. And now I can't do anything to the scene. 
but we do want to make some changes to the scene but we just don't want to be moving around this overlay because the overlay is in the right place but you can also lock overlays so if we come into the overlays you can see that we've got this this is the overlay here overlays in the current scene we've got the camera which is this one and we've got the uh, the image overlay for the border but if I try and drag my camera it's actually trying to drag the um, the image overlay I think or maybe the camera behind it but if I click on the uh, lock it'll lock that overlay uh, in fact having said that is that moving something else that might have been moving the camera behind but nevertheless locking the overlay in place is uh, we need, definitely need to do that so so now I can drag this uh, camera here and drag it out so that it covers the corner like that in fact it's actually slightly different size isn't it to this one but this is a great opportunity to show you how you can click in here and we'll instead of making that tall we can just make that a custom size and so you could literally no matter what size you've made your overlay you just drag the corners as you hover over it can you see how it's just dragging the corners there and we can make it exactly the same size as our uh, overlay and this is what I was talking about if I was to put that there you see how the edge of that corner is just uh, sort of creeping out that little corner there is just sticking out I hope that's uh, that's clear so all we need to do now is because this border is big enough that it actually will cover it if I just put that exactly to that line on the inside there there we go so that now no longer sticks out over the edge uh, so yeah then we want to change this screen share to be that size now I've actually made this uh, the size for a standard sort of uh, 1920 by 1080 display resolution although here I'm actually sharing my MacBook screen and so you can see that my MacBook screen is 18, uh, 1920 by 1200 so it doesn't actually fill it properly uh, so just bear that in mind if you're going to share a MacBook screen that isn't a standard resolution uh, we get the picture anyway we've got a nice frame haven't we so don't want to dwell on that too much and let's come down to our top down shot or, or the let's do the one that's the same as this first actually we got this one for the phone didn't we so let's come in and add in our overlay to that one as well you click on image overlay here we go and so I'm going to do the same thing again I'll just uh, I'll lock that overlay so that it's not going to move anywhere now that it's in the right place I'll drag this one over uh, and then I'll grab the it's a bit difficult sometimes if it's behind a button you uh, you don't want to uh, press the button by mistake because I'm actually recording at the same time in fact let me just do this the easy way I'm going to line up one corner where I want it and I'm going to drag this out this corner do you know what the more I'm looking at this overlay the more I'm thinking I don't know why I don't have this overlay on my videos <laughs> it does seem to match with my uh, color scheme rather well so there we go we'll drag that out so now we've got my phone view I'd forgotten I was still on phone view my phone's getting rather hot so there we go that's how this scene works we've now got a uh, little phone camera that we can use uh, or if I wanted to demonstrate my apps uh, I actually took off all the apps on here uh, but I've got my uh, my phone set up that is another scene that we've got built out so the next one which was a little bit different is our top down so now we've got an overlay for this one as well obviously uh, come down to the bottom go into image overlays and we've got our side by side shot there we go we add that one in look at that it's looking professional isn't it and uh, I don't know how long we've been filming now an hour and 45 minutes and there's a lot of waffling in there a lot of explanation going on as well but we've built out you know almost our complete set of uh, scene overlay so as I say I will be making complete packs and things like that available further down the line um, but just give it a go yourself take these files that will always be free and uh, play around with them and uh, have a go yourself because it's uh, it's one of those things that once you get into it it's uh, becomes pretty straightforward the last one is our countdown timer so we've got a scene for that one not much to do here uh, whoops I just clicked on a movie file we don't want that just yet um, we're going to do some animated overlays next in keynote as well and that is uh, just as easy <laughs> so let's come in here and click on this one stream starting soon so our picture is a little bit on the small side so let me just put this just like that we could make the image circular if you want so if I came into this image and actually made it as a circular image like that we could do that 
and so we could make it the same size that way but given that we've got this as instant alpha you can do it however you want really it doesn't matter does it because it's blocking out whatever's in the background anyway so let's just make that square like that there we go doesn't that look good <laughs> it's a pity about the on-screen talent nothing i can do about that i'm afraid uh, i can touch up the colors but uh, yeah, there's not much I can do about the actual looks. So there we go. We've uh, got that one. Um, one thing that I did on mine, I don't know whether it's worth it or not. It's just a little stylistic thing is I actually changed the camera to be background. Uh, but if you're using a green screen, you'll know it didn't change the actual background. And so uh, being a little bit, uh, well, being the way I am, I actually made a black and white version of the background <laughs> so that it matches as well. Uh, but there you go. That is uh, that's another story. So uh, yeah, whether you want that or not, whether you want it to distract from what's going on, it's just another option that you can have. I'll put this all back for now, though, so that we're in uh, full Technicolor. So that is the stream starting soon. But if you remember, my one also, the one that I showed you earlier, had a countdown timer and music on it as well. And so the uh, countdown timer is quite simple it is an overlay in ecamm they make that very easy as they do with most things if you click on the new countdown overlay and here you can see you've got uh you've got the countdown you can choose your typeface and the size the and so on and then you can also add like different colors and effects and things like that let's just start with this for now uh, and just let's get our positioning right first before we think about it. Uh, I mean, we could have it there. We could have it up in this top corner. We could have it anywhere. Let's just, for the sake of argument, let's make it nice and big and bold here. And let's try and match this color here, just so that I can show you a couple of extra things that you can do with it. So let's click on that again to edit it. Uh, now we've got the duration here. I'll come to that one in a minute, um, but we can change the size of it. So let's make it, uh, let's make it nice and big. Uh, there we go 144 and the color of it as well we can change the color so uh, let's make it something like uh, in fact let me just have a look what color that one is it's this blue color so we've got nice nice big bold writing there uh, so we want to make it something like that blue so let's just come we've got the, uh, the color wheel here and if I just change this we can change it to some nice, nice blue color. And then let's say we want to add a, a background to it, or we could add a shadow to it. Uh, it's got the shadow already selected. So now let's click save. Uh, so now we've got our, our countdown there. So in terms of the actual timing of it, uh, one thing that I have with my countdown timer is I have it so that it plays the countdown, but then there is this function, as you can see, if I go back into edit, what do you want to happen when the countdown finishes? So what we, we want to do is have this set up so that when we're waiting for our live stream, we've, we've started the stream, but the actual official start hasn't happened yet. So it's counting down to it. You could toggle this button here, which is, or click this little toggle here, which is go to the next scene when finished. And that will mean once it's counted down to zero, it will just immediately go into the next scene. So let's click on save. And in order to do that, what you want to also then make sure is that you move this demo up above your main scene or whichever scene you want to come after it. So here it would finish this countdown and then it will go to the next scene, which is our main scene. OK, which is that one. Now, the next thing you might want to do is add in some music. Now, I've got a particular piece of music that I use in my uh, countdown timer, which is somewhere uh, in here. This one, is it? No, it's not that one. It's this one, stream starting music. So it's this uh, piece of music. Uh, as I said before, all of the uh, the music, just to remind you once again, is uh, from Epidemic Sounds. So uh, there's all sorts of different sounds, uh, different genres of music in there. They've got a huge catalogue of uh, you know good quality music. This may not be to your taste, what I've got playing on at the moment, but there's something for, for everybody in there as well. And like I say, it's uh, the easy way to make sure you don't fall foul of any copyright laws or anything like that. And yet go to takeonetech.io slash epidemic to get your free trial of, uh, of that. But in any case, I downloaded this one that's sort of happily playing away in the background at the moment. We come back to our demo uh, countdown. And so what I want to do is I want to add that as uh, part of this scene. So what I can do is, if you just bear with me one second. Well, 
that might have uh, given the game away a little bit there because the timer has suddenly leapt to a different time. And the reason was for one minute then I forgot how to actually add the bit of music to the current scene. So I just had to check on it. So uh, yeah, we don't remember everything all of the time, do we? But it's simply, <laughs> you just click on the little toggle here, the little wheel, and you click add to scene. And now this has appeared in the, uh, the current scene. Now I happen to know that the uh, this piece of music is, I say I happen to know, I happen to have written it down, 3 minutes and 25 seconds long. So if I just pause this for a moment and I go to uh, the timer, then what I can do is click in edit and I make this time here just the length of that track that I've got. So if I go uh, 325, this scene is basically going to last exactly the same amount of time as that um, that piece of music is. And so when we run the scene, the music will uh, run. And then also when the music is finished is the same time as the timer is going to finish. And so then it will advance to that next scene. So that's how we set up that. So the next thing that we're going to look at is we've done now basically the uh, picture overlays. We've added some music in. Sorry, I should just actually show you exactly the process for how to add that music in. Uh, if we click on the add button in sound effects, it's quite simple. And you just go and find the bit of music and uh, click on OK. And then it will just add it into this, uh, this section here. So uh, the next thing that we're going to look at then is from here, we've done the, as I say, the picture overlays, the uh, timer overlay, we've added a camera, uh, we've added a new group, I showed you how to do that before with the scenes, that's the same with here, if you want to group your overlays together, like I've got different overlays for various different things here. Uh, and then you could add some text as well. This is actually something that's worth mentioning now because in fact, we might wanna add this to this stream. We've got this background, which is stream starting soon. But what you may want to do is on a sort of stream by stream basis, actually update the titles. So we can do that by just adding some text. So we could have like whatever today's stream <laughs> is, <laughs> uh, whatever your title is. So we just click on add and so you can, whoops, I've added that into the wrong place. For some reason, I've switched over to completely the wrong uh, scene there. Let me just come back to that a minute. There we go, that's a bit better. Uh, let me just pause that timer. You see how the music started though, when we came back to this scene, because it's programmed to, uh, to start as soon as the scene starts. So um, yeah, but what I was trying to do, having added it to the wrong scene, is add some text and we called this our, uh, uh, let's call it stream title stream title there we go we've got our stream title and let's say we want to match the the uh the uh, typeface and font of that one we'll click into here and then we were in helvetica before so let's just change the color on that so we'll pick uh white come in here and pick some random colors or they've got some fixed ones in here so stream title and we'll save that as that uh, it's a bit on the large side that isn't it there we go, stream title. So if the stuff stuff you want to add in on a sort of stream by stream basis, that's not the same for everyone, like obviously stream starting soon, then you can do that in, uh, in here. There we go. I hope you found that useful. And if you did, then don't forget to go down and like and subscribe and turn on those notifications so that you get alerted anytime I make any new content. And also don't forget that all of the uh, icon packs and templates and things like that that I've talked about in these videos are available as a free download from my website. So simply head on over to takeonetech.io and there you'll be able to see at the top of the page, there is a link to the actual full tutorial that this is an extract from, uh, but also just below that, you'll see that there there is a uh, area where you can download that full icon pack and template pack and make it your own. So uh, yes, that's the place to go. And also that's the place to go if you want to contact me as well. That's the easiest place. There's a contact page on that uh, website, but also you'll notice just down in the uh, bottom right-hand corner, there's also a little chat box. You can always get in touch with me that way. 
Incidentally, if you're not already using it, then uh, this whole video has been produced with Ecamm Live, and uh, it's the uh, my video editor, uh, my video production environment, should I say, of choice. Uh, certainly better than what I was using before OBS, and so <laughs> yeah, it's uh, highly recommended. It certainly made my life a lot easier. And yeah, if you head over to takeonetech.io/ecamm, then there you can get a free trial and try it out for yourself and see what all the fuss is about. Well, that's about all for now, but as I said, this is actually an extract from a much larger four and a half hour tutorial that I did, which will take you from zero to a full production uh, setup in Ecamm Live, including obviously all of the overlays and transitions and things like that, and uh, linking it to your Stream Deck and designing all of your Stream Deck icons and all of that business everything that you need to get going with your video production and streaming. So uh, I'll link to that video uh, down below as well, or you can just go and find it on the top of my uh, web page as well. But for now, that's all from me, and I'll link to some of the other videos uh, from that tutorial also uh, to the right-hand side. And until the next video, have an absolutely wonderful day.